So this is uh, Math 348, and we're doing linear programming. There are several homework problems that are due, and I'm going to go over uh, almost all of them in a series of these videos. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to start with problems um, 4.21 and 4.32. So <clears throat> there was a problem 3.23 which is used in 4.21, which is used in 4.32, and which is also used in um, uh, 4.41. Let's just start with this. So originally when we saw this, pro this problem, we converted the text into linear programming. We had an objective function to maximize, 9,000x1 plus 9,000x2. X1 and X2 were fractions of businesses that the protagonist could invest in. And we had four constraints. X1 is at most one and X2 is at most one. There was a uh, an amount of money you could invest, which was at most 12,000. 10,000x1 plus 8,000x2 is less than or equal to 12,000. 400x1 plus 500x2 less than or equal to 600, and an x1 and x2, the usual non-negativity conditions. So we solved this graphically because it's only a problem in two variables. And it turns out <clears throat> when you solve it graphically, the maximum occurs when x1 and x2 are both equal to two thirds. They're at this corner point feasible solution. And the maximum value uh, of z you get is 12,000. So it's nice to know the solution, um, that's it. But the problem is to introduce slack variables and solve it using the simplex method, first algebraically, and then with the simplex tableau. So in this little talk, I'm just going to solve it algebraically and the next one I'll use the tableau. So we introduce slack variables, x1 less than or equal to one becomes the equation x1 plus x3 equals one x2 less than or equal to 1 becomes the equation x2 plus x4 equals 1. We introduce the slack variable x5 into this constraint inequality and the slack variable x6 into this constraint inequality. So let's change this. Well, let's put this in the standard form for an algebraic solution. Again, this is the problem with the inequalities. When we introduce the slack variables, we get this. And we also write z equal to this in the form z minus the right-hand side equals 0. And we start by, by having x1 and x2 be our non-basic variables, and x3, x4, x5, and x6, the basic variables. And we want to be able to, but of course, if x1 and x2 are 0, z is 0. Right? This is 0, z is 0. So we'd like to increase either x1 or x2 to increase our, the value of the objective function. And we look at this equation for the objective function and we choose the variable with the largest in absolute value coefficient, the largest negative, the, the negative coefficient largest in absolute value. In this case, they're equal. So we could choose either x1 or x2 as the variable we will change from non-basic to basic. So we'll choose x1. I could choose x2, but I'm choosing x1. So this is the column with x1 in it. And if I increase x1, x1 can be at most one because x3 has to be greater than or equal to zero. All of the slack variables, as well as the initial variables x1 and x2 have to be non-negative. If I look at 
the second equation, there's no x1. So this is not changed in any way by increasing the value of x1. In the third equation, if I increase the value of x1, it can't be any bigger than 12,000 over 10,000 x1. Because if it were, then this would have to be negative and you can't have negative, negative values for your variable. And 12,000 over 10,000 is six over five. In the fourth constraint equation, I can increase x1, but no more than 600 or over 400 or three halves. So I'm looking at the ratio of the right-hand side of the equation to the non-zero coefficients of x1. And I look for the smallest ratio. So the ratios were one, six fifths, and three halves. The smallest of these three numbers is one. So I put a, in this case, a green box around this equation. And this, that is my pivot. I want to, this equation is fine. The coefficient of x1 is one. <clears throat> But I would like to perform the basic operations on linear equations. So in all the equations other than in this equation, x1 doesn't appear with a non-zero coefficient. And what you can do to a system of equations to simplify it, if you like, uh, but not change the solutions, you can multiply an equation by a non-zero scale or a non-zero number and you can add or subtract the multiple of one equation to another. So what I'm going to do is I have this equation. I've written it down in here. I haven't changed it. If I take equation and equation two, I don't change that because there's no x1 in equation two. There's 10,000 x1 in equation three. So I take equation three minus 10,000 times x1. And when I do the arithmetic, this is what I get. If I take equation four minus 400 times equation one, the x1s cancel, and this is what I get. And I do the same thing with the objective equation. If I add 9,000 times equation one to equation zero, the x1 disappears, and I get this. So in the first iteration of the simplex method, I have these equations. And the basic variables are the ones which are in a column where the, where the variable only occurs once and with coefficient one. So x1, x3, x4, x5, x6, these are now my basic variables. Over here, I'm just writing the basic variables. Now I look at the objective function equation and there's only one negative coefficient for x2. And that means if I increase x2, I increase the value of z. And how much can I increase x2? So in this equation, if I look, I can increase x2 to one, but no more, because if x2 were bigger than one, x4 would be negative. In this equation, I can increase x2 up in, until x to 8,000 x2 is 2,000, or x2 is in most 2,000 over 8,000. That is, the ratio of the right-hand side to the coefficient of x2 is a fourth. And in equation four, the coefficient of the right-hand side to the, the, the ratio of the coefficient of the right-hand side to the coefficient of x2 is two over five. So these ratios are one a fourth and two fifths. And the smallest is a fourth. So I put a red box around this. And, and now this position is going to be my pivot. So I want to perform elementary operations on these equations. So in this equation, x2 has coefficient one and x2 doesn't appear in any other equation. So I can get coefficient one for x2 just by multiplying this equation by one over 8,000, or if you like, dividing by 8,000. And when I do that, this is equation three, this is what I get. Oops, let me push it up. When I divide equation 
three by 8,000, I get exactly this, x2 minus 5 fourths x3 plus 1 over 8,000 x5 equals a fourth. And then I subtract multiples of this equation from each of these three equations to eliminate the x2s. And when I do that, these are the equations that I get. And you see now the basic variables are x1, x2, x4, x6. And z, when I solve for those variables, z is 11,250. It's greater than the 9,000 I had before. But I look at this equation for the, this equation corresponding to z. And there still is a negative coefficient. That means if I increase x3 as much as I can, still maintaining all the constraints, I'll increase z. So I look at this column. And again, I look at the ratio of the right-hand side to the coefficient of x3 in the cases where that coefficient is positive. 1 over 1 is 1. 3 fourths over 5 fourths is 3 fifths. This is negative, so I don't do anything to that. 75 over 225 is a third. The smallest of these three red numbers is a third. So this is, I put a green box around that. And now this is my pivot position. So I'm going to take this equation, divide by 225. So the coefficient of x3 is 1 and then add or subtract multiples of that equation. What is that equation? Here it is. When I divide this equation by 225, I get x3 minus 1 over 3600 x5 plus 1 over 225 x6 equals a third. That's what I get. And then if I add or subtract multiples of this equation to equations 0, 1, 2, and 3 to eliminate the x3, I get equations that look like this. <clears throat> Z plus a half x5 plus 10 x6 equals 12,000 and so forth. And now all of the coefficients of the variables in the objective function equation are positive. So I'm done, there's nothing more that I can do. And <clears throat> My basic variables are x1, x2, x3, x4. So in the non-basic variables, x5 and x6 are set equal to zero. When you solve these equations for x1, x2, x3, and x4, these are the values that you get. x1 is 2 thirds, x2 is 2 thirds, x3 and x4 are 1 third. And for those values with x5 and x6 zero, z is 1200. So we have, we've answered our problem. We've solved the problem. X1 is two thirds, X2 is two thirds, and our maximum profit is 12,000, which is exactly what we got when we solved the problem graphically. Two thirds, two thirds was the maximum that was the corner point feasible solution that was optimal and the maximum profit was 12,000. So these are not easy problems to solve because there's a lot of arithmetic you have to do. That's just the nature of the subject. But it's simplified a tiny bit when we use the simplex tableau method and I'll solve this problem using the simplex tableau. Um, in a talk that I hope I'll be able to post on YouTube uh, on Monday. 
Uh, I'm going to have several office hours on Zoom this week. So uh, this is rather a complicated subject and you should take advantage of the opportunity to log on and ask questions directly. Okay, that's it.